My name is Kristen McFarland and I'm a Certified Financial Planner and Wealth Advisor at Dara Wealth Management. Today we're going to talk about how stock options work. If you have stock options, you may be wondering what you should do with them. So today we're going to go through a, a quick high-level overview of what they are and how they work. So there's two common types of stock options, qualified stock options and non-qualified stock options. Stock options give you the right but not the obligation to buy your employer's stock at a specified price at a later date. So once they vest, you actually have the ability to buy the shares at what's called the strike price, the exercise price. Now the difference between qualified and non-qualified stock options is that qualified stock options have favorable tax treatment if certain holding period requirements are met. We'll get into that a little bit more later. So many companies are now giving out restricted stock units, or RSUs. Now these actually aren't stock options at all. They're awards. So instead of having to purchase the shares, they're just given to you after you vest. So with stock, stock options, you're given an award agreement and the details of the stock option plan. Now in the agreement, you'll find a whole lot of information but you really want to look in the beginning for the vesting schedule and your exercise price or strike price. Now this is what, of course, you can buy the shares at later once you've vested. So the vesting schedule is a, a series of uh, timetables on when you're actually able to buy the shares. So it might be time-based, such as after a year, you may be a quarter vested, or it may be performance-based, whether it's the company's performance or another metric. Uh, and it may even be a combination. So you'll need to look at your grant agreement and the terms of the stock option plan to find that out. So your exercise price is typically the fair market value of the stock at the time the options were granted. Again, this is the price that you can buy the shares for after they vest. So unlike restricted stock units, which are given to you, you actually need to buy the stock options. So you'll need to have the cash upfront to buy the shares. So if the stock later declines in value and you haven't sold them yet, you'll be considered underwater because the stock will be worthless at that point. Well, not worthless, but you'll have a loss. So if you are in a private company and you have stock options, you might not be able to exercise and sell right away. So you might need to exercise and hold the shares if you decide to exercise at all. Now this is why it's really important to have a plan for your stock options because if you're unable to sell or divest the shares later, that really puts you at a lot of financial risk because if the stock really plummets or loses value, you know, you've paid your own money for that and you can't get anything from it. So there's really no way to liquidate. Um, if you're with a public company on the other hand and assuming that you're not considered an insider, you may be able to exercise and sell right away to capture whatever gains might be available. Now recall, recall that the central difference between incentive stock options uh, and non-qualified stock options is the tax treatment. For non-qualified stock options, when you exercise the shares, there'll be tax consequences and your employer's automatic withholding may not be enough to cover the tax due. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that you're working with a CPA or accountant um, for quarterly tax estimates to make sure that you're not going to be penalized from the IRS later. Uh, and then later, when you go and sell the non-qualified shares, you'll owe either short or long-term capital gains taxes, assuming you didn't sell them immediately after you exercise. Of course, you could also have a loss. For incentive stock options or qualified stock options, uh, in order to get the favorable tax treatment, you'll have to meet the qualifications for what's considered a qualifying distribution. Now, this is when you've held the shares for at least two years from the day they were granted and one year from the date that you exercised. And when you sell, the difference between what you sold it for and what you purchased it for, the spread, um, is considered a long-term capital gain instead of ordinary income. Sounds great, right? Well, maybe not. Uh, remember, stock options can become underwater and they may actually have no value for you to sell them, so you might be out all of the cash you paid for them to begin with. 
So you'll really need to consider whether the potential tax savings down the road is worth the risk of holding on to the options uh, after you exercise them. Now, also for incentive stock options or ISOs, uh, although there's no taxable event at exercise for ordinary income calculations, um, if you do hold on to the shares at the end of the calendar year, it may trigger what's known as the alternative minimum tax or AMT. So you'll really wanna work with your accountant and your financial advisor to develop a plan before exercising your stock options.